thank you. Before I start, how many vegetarians in the room? Okay, good number. How many vegans in the room? Okay, two here. Okay, how many proud meat eaters? Not so proud today, okay. So you may not like so much what I have to say. I'm so happy you're here, okay. As John Muir rightly said, when we tug at a single thing in nature, we find that is attached to the rest of the world. And nowhere is this more true than when we look at our food choices. The food we choose to eat every single day has a direct impact on how we use our land, on how we use our water, on it has an impact on the quality of the air, and it has an impact on whether or not, or how much threatened our biodiversity is. And it also has a major impact on our health. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So currently, 70% of rainforest is already being destroyed. And only to be able to raise livestock. When you think about deforestation, it is the number one reason why wildlife is getting to be near extinct in many different places of the world. Every time we cut trees to raise livestock, we are diminishing our capacity to capture CO2 that we produce in the energy and transportation industries. Right now, one-third of the arable land on Earth is used to raise livestock. And when we look at this number in the U.S., it's about 80% of the arable land. But here's one thing that most people don't know, and that is that in one acre of land, we can, if we use that one acre of land to grow vegetables, legumes, or grains, we can produce up to 15 times more protein than if we use the same land to raise livestock or to produce meat. The food we choose to eat every single day, because it's focused on what? The consumption of meat and dairy, is directly responsible for 18% of the greenhouse gases that we produce on Earth. Just to give you a comparison, this is more than we produce in CO2 for all planes, all cars, all trucks, or trains, all the transportation in the entire world combined. So when we choose to drive an electric car, and we think that we are helping the planet, the only thing we are doing is helping what? Decrease the amount of CO2 that we produce. But CO2 is just one of the many gases that we call greenhouse gases. We do not, when we drive an electric car, we do nothing to decrease the amount of methane, which is 23 times more warming than CO2. We do nothing to decrease the amount of nitrous oxide that we produce, which is 310 times more warming than CO2. We do nothing to prevent deforestation. We do nothing to how we use the land, and we do nothing to how we use our water. 55% of fresh water on Earth is used for livestock. And then at the same time, we have almost one billion people on the planet who have no access to adequate drinking water. We have two billion people on this planet who have no access to water for cleaning or personal hygiene. It takes 138 gallons of water to produce one pound of wheat. It takes between 10 to 100, 150 gallons of water to produce 
plant-based foods. It takes between 2,500 and 5,000 uh, gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. And water is our most precious natural resource. So all of these effects that we see that our daily food choices will have on the planet, it will also have on our health and our longevity. In the U.S., we spend $3.2 trillion a year in health care. It's about one in every five dollars in the U.S. budget. And just to give a perspective again, this would be the equivalent as $1,000 a month for every man, every woman, and every child in the U.S. And 75% of this cost goes to treat largely preventable chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. So when we look at risk factors for these chronic diseases, and this is a study done in almost 200 countries, and this is particularly the case in the U.S., we see that dietary factors is the number one risk factor for all chronic diseases. It comes before tobacco smoking, it comes before high uh, body mass index, it comes before high cholesterol, it comes before high blood glucose. Dietary factors alone is responsible for one in every four deaths in the U.S. And if we take into consideration that all the other risk factors that are below dietary factors, high body mass index, high glucose, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, all of these are a direct result of diet, then all deaths related to these chronic diseases, 50% is a result of the food we choose to eat every single day. And this large cohort, cohort of about more than 80,000 people is the Adventist Health Study. It's a longitudinal study going for more than 20 years. What the researchers showed is that when you compare those who eat the least amount of meat to those who eat the most amount of meat, the later will have a 61% increased risk of dying of cardiovascular disease compared to those who eat the least amount. And the reverse is true. Those who eat the most amount of plant-based proteins have a 40% decrease in their risk of cardiovascular disease. So the same cohort, the Adventist Health Study number two, shows that when we look at preval both prevalence and incidence of type 2 diabetes, it goes lower the less meat one eats. When I, see, when I say meat, it's just because it's easier to say meat. What I mean is animal-based foods. So interesting enough, the Adventist Health Study is called the Adventist Health Study because it is a longitudinal study done with Seventh-day Adventists, and the largest population in the U.S. is located in Loma Linda, California. Loma Linda is one of the five blue zones. Blue zones are regions in the world where people reach age 100 at 10 times the average rate of the rest of the world. So you would think that the blue zones, people would be paying attention to what are the lifestyle factors in the blue zones that we can apply to the rest of the population to increase the chance that we all can reach 100 years. And interesting enough, when you look at the five blue zones, there are nine lifestyle factors that they all share. But when you look specifically at diet, that is one food that all of the five regions have in common. And it is not fish. It is beans. The intake of legumes may be the single most important dietary predictor of a lifespan. 
And when we compare the nutrition facts of beef or beans with beef, we see that it comes about the same energy, the same amount of calories. It has 20 times less total fat. It has no saturated fats. It has no cholesterol. It has tons of fiber, where animal foods comes with zero fiber. No animal food is a source of fiber in the diet. It has twice as much iron, and is a type of iron that is not related to increased risk of chronic disease. Heme iron is. has the same amount of protein and costs a fraction of what beef does. So, these people, the researchers in Loma Linda, then asked the question, what would happen in the U.S. alone if people, instead of eating beef, chose to eat beans? But before I show you that, first I'm going to tell you this. So, right now, the way it works is we use beans, mostly soybeans, to feed cattle, to produce meat, to feed humans. This is a very inefficient way of producing protein and is depleting our entire planet and is having a major impact on our health. So those nice folks that know Melinda then ask what would happen in the U.S. if people start choosing beef, beans over beef. And they said, they realized that we could save up to 42% of the farmland, which would be the equivalent of 1.6 times the state of California. Think about it. So it's all that much land that you'll be protecting. You'll be protecting the wildlife associated with it. You'll be protecting the land. You'll be preserving water, and you would be contributing to producing less greenhouse gases in the planet. But there's another group that went one step further, and those researchers at the University of Oxford, and they published this a few months ago in Science Magazine. And interesting, what the study, what they decided to do is, they looked at 40,000 farms in 119 countries, and they looked at 90% of the foods that humans eat. Then they ask a question, so what is the one thing that is going to have the most impact on the planet? And they said that a vegan diet is the single most important thing or the most impactful way that we can have a say on what's going on on a planet. So much so that the lead investigator, after the first year of research, he decided to go vegan himself. Then they asked the question, in a hypothetical, very unlikely future, when all humans go vegan, what would happen? And the result, the answer is that we would be able to save up to 75% of the farmland in the world. That would be the equivalent of the US, China, Australia, and the European Union combined. Think about all the land you save, all the water you save, all the wildlife you save, and all the effect on greenhouse gas emissions. So to answer the question, que especie queremos ser, right? So I'll quote Tolstoy, who said, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. And when it comes to the future of the planet, what we choose to put on a plate every single day does matter. And we have a chance to have a voice heard at least three times every single day. And we should know that if we do want to make the world a better place, we need to take a look at ourselves and make a change. Thank you.